How many love Jesus? It is so good to be here. How many of you appreciate your pastors? Y'all can do better than that. How many of you appreciate your pastors? Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. Well, my wife, Jody, and I are so glad to be here today. And uh, thank you for inviting us. Since the last time we have seen you, uh, we have welcomed our first grandchild into the world. She was born seven days ago. Her name is Halo. And uh, we are so excited that she is here. So it's going to be even a better Christmas because baby Halo is here. I'm so deeply honored even when I have the opportunity to stand before all of you. I do not... Uh, take this lightly, and I want to say thank you for being in the house of God in this amazing church with amazing people and Pastor Dio and Tekoa. Uh, Jody and I love them and appreciate them, and we're so glad to be with you. I'm excited about this time and what the Lord is going to say to us today, so uh, we're going to get right into it. If you go to your Bibles, and I believe they're going to put these scriptures on the screen, I want you to go to Numbers, chapter number 13, Numbers 13, and starting at verse 30, I'm reading from the King James Version. We're going to look at Numbers 13, verses 30 and 31, and then I'm going to skip over to Numbers 14, verse 24. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able. That sounds like a what had happened was. I'm just saying, it was, you know, we be not able <laughs> to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And I want you to skip over to chapter 14, verse 24. And it says, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. In some translations, it will say, because Caleb had a different spirit. But my servant Caleb, because he had a, another spirit or a different spirit, hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Today, I believe that God is given us the opportunity to begin to look at numbers and really begin to look at it with a fresh perspective and just two words if you're taking notes. And the title of our message today is No Limits. Everyone say No Limits. What's interesting about this particular story of Caleb, it's a very familiar passage of Scripture because, as you know, the children of Israel, they were promised to walk into a land that flowed with milk and honey. And in this particular context, Moses begins to bring together 12 spies, each spy representing a tribe of Israel. And he said, I want you to go to this land, spy it out, check it out, gather the intel in the land to see if we can go and dwell in the land. So imagine you have 12 guys who are responsible to go and check out the land, and they see that the land is plentiful. The land has more than enough. In fact, they needed to bring back evidence from the land that the land was fruitful and that if they were to up and relocate the entire uh, nation of Israel, that everything would be fine. But what's interesting is 10 of the spies saw obstacles and only two of the spies saw opportunity. Sometimes when God is bringing you into a new reality, he will expose you to something that will expand you and give you a different perspective than you've ever had before. You may not be ready to take it over and to walk into it, but sometimes he gives you a sneak preview of a coming attraction. 
Uh, for any of you that have been to see the movie King Richard, what's interesting about that movie is months ago, before the movie came out, if you were there at the theater looking at another movie, it would tell you that the story of Serena and Venus was coming. So all of a sudden, it began to, just in two minutes, give you a snapshot of what's possible. I just took my son, uh, our son this past weekend, to go and look at it for the second time. And what was so powerful is that the father began to portray and cast a vision on his daughters of what they could be. We might be in Compton right now, but we're not going to stay here for the rest of our life. In other words, what he was doing is he was removing the limitation off of their mindset that we might be here, but we're getting ready to move into another zip code. But before we get into that another zip code, we've got to be faithful in little because so that we are faithful in much. So that means we might have to get out and hit some tennis balls in the rain. And there might be some people looking at us crazy and say, child, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? I'm working on a little something something because I'm not going to be here all alone. Yeah. Hey my God. Mm. So what's interesting is two of the spies Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit. What's interesting is two of the ten spies carried back grapes on a pole. According to research, they said the grapes were so big that they were almost 12 pounds in size. I just want you to wrap your head around, you know, when you go to Publix and you buy a bag of grapes, grapes are about, you know, maybe uh, you can fit them in a finger, maybe an inch or two, but grapes that are 12 pounds in size, those are huge grapes, big grapes. And the grapes were just a snapshot of what's to come. The grapes was to prove that if you move your family here, there is industry here and you can be fruitful. Why is that? Because a grape, when a grape grows, it grows in a cluster, it grows in a vine, it grows all over the place. So what's interesting about a grape, a grape also produces raisins. A grape also produces vinegar. A grape has other different things in it. So what God is trying to do at this season is to take the limits off of your vision so that your babies can have babies. <laughs> oh, somebody's going to get that in a minute. So when we begin to understand that God takes us into a land. Now, back in that time, the main industry was uh, uh, cattle, milk, honey. Uh, today, in modern-day vernacular, what our industry is, whatever we put our hands to, however we earn income, however we are able to take care of our family. And what's interesting, the spies, they had one job. Just say one job. Is the land plentiful? Everybody say plentiful. Is it purposeful? And can it take care of us? Now, what's interesting, the spies who did not see what Joshua and Caleb saw, they came back and said, we saw giants in the land, and the giants uh, looked at us as grasshoppers. Now, what's interesting is the spies never talked to the giants, and so in my mind, I'm like, did they Snapchat you? Did they send you a text message and told you what you couldn't become? How is it that the giants saw you as grasshoppers? And what's interesting, when you don't see yourself becoming anything else, you speak from a place of limitation. Even though you serve a God who is limitless, what happens is people begin to limit their potential because they have always been in a certain place. But I submit to you that God has brought you to Acceleration Church to accelerate you out of your past. In other words, you're about to move past your past. You're about to step into something that you've never seen before because as you step into it, you're about to be first generation. First generation that came out. And the reason you have got to come out is because you're about to reach back. Everybody take your left hand and reach back. Reach back and I want you to yank forward. All right? On three. One, two, three. What you're doing is you're first generation so you can reach back and yank forth the generation that's behind you and say, we ain't staying here no more. Oh, my God. I said I was going to be on my best behavior. I don't want to get ahead of myself. 
This is still my introduction. I need to lay down some groundwork. Dr. Martin Slegman, who is uh, in his research back in the 1960s, uh, he's a psychologist at the University of Pennsylvania, he began to research what he called back in the 60s learned helplessness. And he had an interest in depression, trying to understand what caused people to be limited. And in his research, he began to say that learned helplessness is when individuals have a sense of powerlessness. When people have a sense of powerlessness, they have elevated stress levels, they are demotivated, and anything triggers them and sets them off. What's interesting about learned helplessness is when an individual comes from that disposition, it limits who they can become because they believe where they are is all they're supposed to have. So it is equivalent of sitting in a car that has the ability to drive forward, but you leave the car in neutral. Learned helplessness is the ability sometimes to look through the rear view mirror instead of saying, you know what, I'm not going back to where I've been. I'm moving past and I'm going further than I have ever before. But sometimes the reason people begin to stay in a state of learned helplessness is because of the passengers in the vehicle. And I believe the reason God brings you to a place called acceleration is because he is shifting you from learned helplessness to learned hopeless, hopefulness. Learned hopefulness is a mindset that says, I believe all things are possible. Learned hopefulness begins to look through the windshield of where you can go. Learned hopefulness begins to see what others won't see so that you can become who you were meant to be. Learned hopefulness has the motivation and the inspiration and the articulation that says, I am somebody. Learned hopefulness says, I can, I will, I shall, I must. Learned hopefulness. And what's interesting, whoever has the most hope has the most to influence. When I come from a place of hope, see, hope is all about moving towards what you want. Because what you want, wants you. So I have hope in the present as I move towards the future because I realize that everything that I learned in the past has brought me to this place. So when we begin to look at Caleb, Caleb had a different spirit. Caleb came from a disposition of learned hopefulness. Joshua came from a place of learned hopefulness. Says, we can do it. Let's go. Now, they didn't know how they were going to do it, but something in them said yes when everybody was saying no. And sometimes, let me flip it on you, sometimes God will have you say no to something to protect your yes. Mm. So when I begin to learn, learn hopefulness, there are three, three insights that I want to give you. Insight number one, if I am to understand no limits and move towards what I call learned hopefulness, number one, I must have right thinking. Everybody say right thinking. A few years ago, a friend of mine calls me and he says, I want you to pick me up at the airport. He was flying into town. And I said to myself, he knows a lot of people in Orlando. Why does he want me to pick him up at the airport? But sure enough, I go and I pick him up at the airport. And he said, I want you to take me to uh, a mutual friend's uh, place. Uh, we're going to have a meeting at the country club. And I said, okay. And so we drive to this friend's gated community. We're at the country club. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, how in the world did I get in the room? Why am I sitting here? Because the friend that we were meeting was the CEO of a local company. And I said to my friend on the way over, I said, are you on the board of directors for his company? And he said, no, I'm just an advisor. And when he said it, it just whoosh, went right over my head. Okay, you're just an advisor, great. So I'm sitting there at this dinner, 
and we're talking and everything, and they're talking business. And so the one gentleman, the CEO, says, why don't you guys, let's go back to my house. So we go back to his house, and I'm sitting there. Now, I'm from Buffalo, New York. I, I was born in the ghetto. I, I, I mean, I lived in Atlanta. I've been in Orlando. Next year will be 30 years that I've been in Orlando. I was in over my head. Have you ever been someplace where they are talking at such a level, and you're wondering, how did you get in the room? Why am I here? What, what, what is this all about? And I mean, I was just so, like, confused. I was like a deer staring at headlights. And so they're sitting there, and eventually my friend um, that I picked up from the air, so airport says, hey, take me to my hotel. So we leave, and we go, and I drop him off at his hotel, and I'm just going home, like, in a daze. Like, what was that all about? And so to fast forward, a few weeks later, what I came to realize is that the CEO's house that we were at, his company had just gone public. And my friend that I picked up for the airport, the reason he was an advisor is because he had a private equity company that owned a significant stake in the company that was going public. And the reason they couldn't tell me what was going on, they were hoping that I would pick up on what was happening because if they told me to buy the stock when it came public, that would have been insider trading. So they didn't say anything to me, they just put me around the thinking to see if I would get it. And because dial of my limited understanding, I didn't get it. I didn't see it. And what I begin to realize is that God is getting ready to expose you to conversations and opportunities. And when you're in there, say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes that I might see. Open my ears that I might hear and I might get it. And dial, I missed the opportunity to invest in this company because I didn't think about it. I didn't see it. I didn't get it. I just thought it was picking up a friend at the airport. And what I'm saying to you, Acceleration Church, is that there's about to be a Caleb anointing that's about to hit this house. That you have a different spirit. You are not going to miss out on opportunities because you are sitting under an anointing that has been anointed for the marketplace. Those of you who are working jobs right now, your job is about to be relocated. Not you relocated, the job is about to be relocated. And what that means, you can work anywhere in in the world. That means you don't have to physically get up and leave Orlando. If a company is based in Shanghai, they can use your brilliance while you're sitting here with just a few taps and a click, with a, few, a touch and a swipe. They can use your brilliance. But you got to have right thinking. Right thinking. And here is the crazy thing. The company went public. The CEO made $40 million, ended up selling the company to a bigger entity, and as fate would have it, I was in Boston one day, and I'm walking down the streets of Boston, and I happen to look up, and there's my CEO friend on a cell phone. And he waves at me, Simon, how are you? How's it going? I'm like, what are you doing? He says, I'm buying back the company that I just sold. And the thing about it, I was in the room, but I didn't see it. So when I talk about right thinking, your thinking is changing because of your input is changing. And what I recognized, I needed to be around individuals that would challenge me to be uncomfortable staying in the same place. But they couldn't say anything. They wanted to see if I picked up on it and got it. Here's the whole point. What feeds us leads us. What are you feeding on? What are you learning? I realize that the more I begin to feed myself on the Word of God, the more I begin to uh, ask the Holy Spirit to show me and to tell me what I don't know about, all of a sudden it changes what I'm saying because my mouth uh, begins to speak forth what's in my heart. And so if you are going to change your tomorrow, it starts today with what am I thinking? Why is that important? 
a new study published by the Journal of Nature Communications that is carried out by psychologists at Queen's University in Kingston, Canada, says that the average person has 6,200 thoughts per day. What they go on to say is if you have 6,200 thoughts per day, a thought or thoughts create a cocoon. A cocoon of thinking, think about this back to a science class, is that if I am in the cocoon of my thinking, eventually I'm going to metamorphosize or emerge from the cocoon of my thinking with a behavior, with a habit that's going to produce a result and an outcome. So how do I begin to take control of my thinking? And it simply starts with Romans 12 to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How do we renew our mind? How you start the day determines the day. So how do I begin to renew my mind first thing in the morning with the word of God, prayer, and worship? Renewing my mind. So no matter what thought darts come my way, I have a way to say, uh-uh-uh, not today. Ain't happening. I'm not taking that. No, I'm going to captivate that thought. And that thought has to come under the obedience of the word of God. Because there will be days when you have thoughts and you will feel cray-cray. And we have to say, thought, not today. Come in line with the Word of God. Every time I've had moments, I've, and I have had moments where I want to give up, I want to quit, I start doubting myself, I start having a conversation in my head. You know you crazy, you know you need to go and get a nine to five job, what are you doing out here? And every time I have that thought, all of a sudden the word of God begin to rise up in me that says I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and never beneath. I am first and never last again. I start talking to myself. Heaven, sometimes you got to talk to yourself. So right thinking is to say, wait a minute, come in line with the word of God. So if there's something practical that I would give you, before your head hits the pillow tonight, I hope you have a journal or a notebook or perhaps or capture some things on your smartphone. But I want to invite you to write down what is right about you. Because when I be begin to focus on what's right about me according to the word of God and according to who you are as an individual, what you're saying is you are taking control of your mind and you are grabbing hold to the steering wheel of where you're going so you don't veer out of control by the thoughts in your mind right thinking. So if you say, Simon, how do I really be, begin to embrace no limits? Am I thinking right? Everything starts with thinking. Second point, second point, right environment. The spies existed in an environment where they said, we be not able, learned helplessness. We cannot do it. And if you were to study this scripture out in Numbers chapter 13, you would find out that God killed off the 10 spies' families, and it took about 40 years. Why were the spies' family killed off? Because if they would have went into the land with, we can't get it, we don't belong here, we shouldn't have it, they would have lost it because of learned helplessness. And they would have constantly been in conflict with the other two spies' family who said, we believe that God has given this to us. Can you imagine? So environment is everything. There's a book I want you to get a hold of. The book is called 30 Million Words. It's written by Dr. Dana Susskind. Dr. Dana Susskind, a medical, direct, uh, medical doctor at the University of Chicago. And, and, and why I often mention this book, especially to new parents, is in her research, what she has discovered, that children from zero to four born into professional households, those children from zero to four years of age have heard 45 million words. 
children who are born into the households of non-professional families from zero to four have only heard 13 million words. And that difference of 32 million words determines that child's development, reading ability, comprehension, where they live, what they earn, and who they marry. And what she is saying is that parents, and it's not just zero to four, but in a household must create an environment that is rich in helping children develop cognitively and, and, and their self-esteem and their self-concept and their self-perception. Let me take you back to the movie King Richard. Do you remember in the movie, for those of you who have seen it, there is a scene where he invites everyone to sit down and watch Cinderella, to watch the movie. And then he stands up and says, what did you learn? What did you see? And they start saying different things. And he says, the one thing I want to make sure you get is humility. That no matter how much you become successful, that you are humble as you begin to achieve. And what's interesting, when you look at the story of Serena and Venus, it was so moving uh, for, for Jody and I when we saw it and when Daniel and I saw it because the father took time to say, we're not going to rush your development. We're not going to jump at the first offer. We want to make sure that you're in the environment to handle it when it comes. Anybody ever had deep fried turkey before? I, I know, uh, and by, by show of hands, we're all my honest people here. Thank you so much. I am not alone. What's interesting about deep fried turkey is you know you have to take the seasoning and melt the seasoning down. You take the seasoning once it's melted down and it's put into a syringe and then syringe is put into the turkey and the seasoning is released into the turkey. You put that turkey in the refrigerator so that overnight the seasoning can begin to marinate in the turkey. How many tracking with me so far? Then the next day, Uncle Bobo takes out the uh, deep fried turkey and begins to deep fry it in 400 degree Fahrenheit, some of that good peanut oil, right? I know some of y'all got your knives and forks already, all right? And, and you put the turkey in and then you take the turkey out and then you begin to cut it and you're like, mm -mm, because the seasoning has done the job. What's the whole point? The reason God doesn't rush you in your development is because he has to have you in an environment of seasoning. Oh my goodness. When I'm in the environment of seasoning, Seasoning, everything will happen in time, on time, not before time. So for those of you who have been waiting for the promotion, the promotion hasn't happened yet, not because you didn't have the skill set, not because you didn't go back to school to get your degree, not because you didn't get the certification. It's just not time. Because when it is time, you will have the intellectual humility to handle it. So I have to be in the right environment. So the question becomes, how do I ensure that I am in an environment that enables me to grow and to develop? And in that environment, how do I ensure that I'm challenging myself to never settle for the status quo? How am I creating an environment that when people come into my path, that they are changed for the better because of something that the Lord allowed me to do. All of you create environments. You create an environment in every conversation you have. You create an environment in every connection that you have, every phone call, every text, every uh, video chat. That's an environment. What is being said that's moving you forward? What is being transferred? For those of you who have children or nieces or nephews or cousins or individuals that are, are friends that are important to your life, what's that environment? And do people uh, feel and believe that they are cared for, that they matter, that they are seen? Dr. Maria Music, M-U-Z-I-K, is a clinical psychiatrist at the University of Michigan, and she says in her research there are three things that human beings need. Number one, to be valued, 
Number two, to be seen. And number three, to be appreciated. And when I talk about right environment, what are we going to do to ensure that everyone that comes across our path, they feel seen, appreciated, and valued? Why is that important? According to Florida demographic studies, zip code 32810, that is the zip code in this area, right? Zip code 32810 has 38,000 residents that live within this zip code. Zip code 32810 of the 38,000 residents that live in this area, 88% of them have a high school uh, education, high school uh, diploma. About uh, 26% of the 38,000 have a bachelor's degree, and 6% of the 38,000 people that live within 32810 have a graduate education. Why do I share that with you? Because when they break out the demographics even more, there are about 42% of the 38,000 individuals that are single, and about 46% of the individuals that live in this area are married. As you think Acceleration Church of the next decade, how do we create the environment where the 38,000 individuals who may never step foot in this church but may meet you virtually, how do you begin to speak to them and speak to where they are and to let them know that we are concerned about them, that they are seen, that their families are valued, and that they are appreciated. Because if we are to move beyond the four walls, how do we begin to know who's in the area? What concerns them? What, what speaks to them? Now, here's the power acceleration that I want you to think about. When you create an environment where people know that you care about them and that you want to ensure that economically that they are growing, so that means if they are working a job, how do they start a business? If they are renting, how do they begin to own? And here at Acceleration, how do we begin to invite people to recognize we want to give you a hand up, not a hand out? And as we give you a hand up, we want to make sure that you become all that you possibly can be. Right environment. Let me go on. Here's the other thing I want you to consider. When... We create the right environment. When others spew hate, we spew love. When we create the right environment, when others want to pass us over, we realize that's on them, not us. Because the God that we serve died on the cross for us and there is no black and white or yellow or red heaven there's one heaven and while i am here on earth i am the living embodiment of jesus on the earth so no matter where you might be right now you may treat me wrong but i'm not going to treat you in the way you treated me because of the love of god and here's the other thing, when I have that type of love, what you're really saying, I love myself enough to love you until you find God. <laughs> it's environment. It's, it's environment. It's environment. So I'm not going to waste my time trying to do tit for tat and trying to get you back for what you did to me. That's between you and God. I'm just going to meet you where you are, serve the need, be respectful, and invite you to say, you know what? God is just waiting on you. How do we create that environment? But it starts internally. So every single day you say, you know what? I'm removing the limits. I'm not going to be limited by the actions of others who don't get me, who don't understand me, who don't see me because I see myself. And what you're actually doing, hear me, you're actually practicing self-love. When you begin to practice self-love on yourself, you begin to say, I love who I am and who I am becoming. I love who God has made me to be. I might be flawed. I might be perfectly imperfect, but I love who I am. And the reason I want you to think about that is because when you create the right environment within yourself, everyone that is connected to you feeds off of the environment of love that started with you. 
The, oh my goodness, I, I, I got a double click right here. There's something right here. Uh, God wants to bring you to a new place of love. And the environment of love starts with forgiveness. Sometimes we cannot accelerate into our destiny until we forgive those who have done us wrong. I'm going to drop a pen right here. We, we, we got to work in this area right here. My mother and I, uh, when I was eight years of age, I told my mom, I said, Mom, I'm going to be a multimillionaire, and I'm going to take care of you and Dad. And my mother said to me, Son, you have big dreams. And she said it to me at that time that I felt at eight years of age in a condescending manner, and it just shut me down. So for 30 plus years, I have had an arm's length relationship with my mom. I love my mom, I take care of my mom, write a check for my mom, make sure mom is in a good place, but there was, there was, I was harboring something in my heart with my mom. And I, uh, not too long ago, I picked up the phone and called my mom, and my mom said to me, I've been waiting for this call for 35 years. And I said, Mom, I want you to forgive me for not forgiving you and forgive me for har harboring something in my heart against you for all of these years. And what I recognize, I cannot become who I was meant to be until I start with forgiveness in my house. <laughs> Holy Spirit is moving right now. I, I sense it right now. I, I, uh, Pastor Dion Tokoa, I, I got to do some work right now in this area. If right now in this moment you have a loved one that you have not forgiven, I want you to stand on your feet right now because the Holy Spirit is about to release you by releasing them. I want you to get your hands like this, just, just, just half mass like this. And what we're about to do is we're about to release them so that as you step into the next season, there is no limitation. The limitation comes because every time you think about them, you get stressed. Every time they send you a text or somebody mentions their name, there's something that comes up and you're like, oh, and it's there and it's lodged deeply. And what happens is the more you continue to carry unforgiveness, it develops in your nervous system, in your body, and it shows up in different ways. But I just came to Acceleration Church to invite you to a season of release. So as your hands are like this, I want you to say with me, Father God, I want you to forgive me for holding whatever happened to that family member and I want you to say their name you can just say it under your breath or not say it out loud uh, forgive me God for carrying this pain today in this moment in your presence I forgive them I celebrate them I love them and they are in your hands. Help me, Father, whenever I interact with them during this holiday season, that you will give me the mindset, the temperament, the emotional love to meet them where they are, to hug them, and to say to them, God loves you, and so do I. It's been released. It's been released. It's been released. Yeah, it's been released. It's been released. You can be seated. You can be seated. So, point number one, right thinking. Point number two, right environment. Third and final point, right relationships. I believe that... <clears throat> The kingdom of God is built on relationships. 
And when I understand the relationships that I have with everyone that I'm connected to, the limitation is removed because we are now on the same page agreeing and thinking and trusting and believing for better, for better. When I begin to look at my last 30 years here in Orlando, when I trace back to what God has done in 30 years, it all came down to a significant relationship. I submit to you that many of you at this season, you're one relationship away from a breakthrough. I submit to you that when you come into right relationships with individuals, uh, family, friends, or someone that ushers you into your destiny, it's because you have been faithful with little so that you can be faithful with much. When we begin to look at Caleb's life in Numbers 14, 24, you will recall that God said, Caleb, you have been faithful these 40 years. You and your children are going in to take the land because you had a different spirit. In other words, that different spirit that Caleb had so impacted his family and everyone around them that they began to benefit because of his obedience to the relationship with God. God wants a deeper relationship with you that your day starts with him, he is with you throughout the day, and before your head hits the pillow, it's all about God. Here's my challenge to you, Acceleration Church. What are we going to do to build a deeper relationship with God? What does that look like? You know, this morning, I uh, picked up the Bible app, and the Bible app for me is, is how I start my day. And they have gamified the Bible app, gamification, which simply means they begin to tell you where you stand, right? And so it said, and this is my personal challenge to myself because I want to grow in God. So it doesn't make sense for me to encourage you in your relationship if I'm not doing my work. Is that, is that okay? So it said that I had been reading the Bible app for 299 days, okay? And it showed how much time, uh, it showed how many of the Bible plans I had used, which was about 18 in a 12-month span. So now I'm already thinking, how do I increase my reading? How do I begin to get on a five-day or seven-day plan to read through specific areas of the scriptures, love, joy, peace, faith, hope, whatever that is, because what I'm really, really focusing on is a spiritual foundation, a spiritual formation. And what happens is in coming into right relationship with God, it's not about having the relationship when the lights are on. It's about when no one is around. A relationship with God has nothing to do with likes, posts, and reshares. A relationship with God is can you realize that the way up is down? Can you realize that at this particular hour in a world of algorithms and autonomous cars and artificial intelligence, can we begin to realize that God never changes his methodologies of how he moves changes, but he never changes And how do we forever pursue the degree of neology? Neologies that God, I'm willing to stay on my knees so that I am in right relationship with you. Because I believe if God is going to use you and I like never before in the marketplace, how do we ensure that we are intentional about our relationship with him? Then I want to challenge you today, and at this particular season, I want to invite you to find one neighbor next door across the street and I want you to sponsor them this holiday season. I want to challenge you to go and say, if that family has need of anything, I'm going to be a blessing to them. Because sometimes we have to give away what we want to receive. It, 
I, I know this is not deep, but I know that I'm not running the aisles and screaming at you. I'm just sharing my heart. What would it be like to say if there is anybody in need because of my relationship with God, I'm going to do something tangible to demonstrate the love of Christ in the earth? Because people may never come to Acceleration Church, but how they will come to know about God is because of you. I want you to think of five people who are lonely. Right now, you, we've heard about the pandemic, COVID-19, but the pandemic that many researchers are talking about is the pandemic called loneliness. And there are people that are lonely at this season and even beyond. I want you to find three to five people and write a handwritten note so that they know that they are seen, they are valued, and they are appreciated. Because when I come in right relationship with God, I begin to think horizontally, what are all the other relationships that I can touch for his glory? Sponsor a family, write a handwritten note. Why a handwritten note? It shows intention to say that you are not forgotten. You are not forsaken. You matter. But then here's the third challenge. For those of you who are parents, raise your hands. Parents with children. Parents, this coming holiday season, this Christmas, this New Year's, I want to invite you to write a letter to your children, each child, and I want you to begin to decree and declare over their life in the power of words. When we come into right relationships, the, 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 the letters that you write become a message in the bottle. It becomes a carrier pigeon to the soul that when they have moments, they go back to that letter that mommy or daddy wrote to me and begin to say, this is how they think about me. Now I can think better no matter what I'm going through. Right relationships. Right relationships. If you were to break down the word relationship, it's relate, relation, relate. How do we begin to relate to each other in a fresh way? Is this okay that I give you some practical things? Is this okay? Is this, is this helping somebody? Here's the last thing. Here's the last thing, and then we're going to pray. For those of you who have friends... Perhaps your family might not be here in Central Florida, but you have friends that you associate perhaps here at Acceleration or outside of Acceleration. I want you to say to your friends before the end of this year, how can I best serve you in the destiny that you are pursuing? And the reason I'm asking you to ask that question is because if I come into right relationship, I am putting myself in a place of accountability to be called out when I veer off the path. And in asking someone to serve me, I am asking you, help me stay on the path by giving me feedback so that I can honor God, I can serve you, and I can be a better human being for the glory of God. Amen. When that happens, the limits are taken off because you begin to believe that all things are possible and it starts with right thinking what's the second one what's the third one stand on your feet father we so thank you we so bless you I'm, I'm just gonna pray a quick prayer over you and then I'm gonna turn it back over to pastors Dio and Tekoa but Acceleration Church, this is the greatest moment in the history of the world to be alive. Right now. There are almost a thousand people a week moving to Orlando, according to research. A thousand people a week. Why are they coming to Orlando? We all know Orlando's got it going on. But we also believe as they come to Orlando, they're looking for right environment, right relationship where they come to a place that is limitless and all of you have limitless potential in you and wherever you show up in the marketplace i want you to be all that god has called you to be so your hands up half mass let me just pray on you father i thank you for every hand that is raised right now father you know where they are you know what they need you know what is meaningful
faithful to me. Father, I ask you by your power and your spirit that you will enable them to have right thinking, that they begin to pursue a right environment, and they begin to grow and develop in right relationships. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Come on, put your hands together one more time for our dear friend. I'm sorry, but I know you were behind me. For our dear friend, Simon T. Bailey. How many of you enjoyed that word? Someone say no limits. I want, I want to get that in your spirit. I want to get that in your mind. Someone say no limits. Someone say there's no limits for 2022. There's no limits for my life. That there, there is so much power in what he shared and what he's talking about. Because the reality is that as we go through life, very similar to what he said, we start off with the sparkle in the eye. We start off saying we're going to accomplish and get all this done. But the reality is that sometimes things might happen that begin to wean away, gnaw away at that level of faith and hope. But the, but the Word of God tells us that all things are possible. Someone say all things. In other words, there is no limitation to what you can do because God says, I'm a limitless God. And you're my daughter, you're my son. Someone say no limits. I want to make sure that you have no limits in your thinking. That you have no limits in what you believe is possible. Oh, my, I, I, I feel his presence. Like, no, someone say no limits. I'm having you repeat this again and again because we know that our faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. And the more that you can speak to yourself and say no limits, that some of you have come into this door, through those doors today, and you were thinking to yourself, this is my cap. This is the absolute most that I can ever do. But the Holy Spirit has went ahead and shifted that today and says, no limits. Someone say, no limits. I need that to be something you again ingest and digest. I want to do this just for a few more seconds because even as I'm saying to myself, look, I'm, I'm a leader, I'm a pastor, I'm, I'm a leader in business, I'm a leader in ministry. But the facts are that sometimes life can happen that begins to challenge how you feel and what you're expecting. But not today. Someone say no limits. Someone say the limits are coming off. I'm not going to base my thinking and my expectations based on what someone else has done. I'm not going to base it based on what my past might say I'm able to do. Because God says I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Someone say all things. Someone say all things. That what I reach for, I can accomplish. That what I touch, I will receive. Come on, y'all. Someone say no limits. There's such an anointing on that. No limits, no limits. It's so crucial, y'all. As we finish out this year, we have a couple weeks. And then we go into 2022. I want us to have that mindset of no limits. And everything that you do, no limits. I tell you, some of the biggest changes of my life have been when I went against the very limitations that people were trying to place on me. It was the moments when I went against the very limitations that I myself was trying to put in my own mind in one season. Someone say no limits. There's such oil on that. And my prayer is that every single person in this room would operate based on no limits. That God's favor and grace will be all over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to go ahead and take this moment to place a seed in the ground. We'll be wrapped up here in about five or ten minutes. But I want to take these next couple minutes to ensure that we put a seed in the ground and I want to put a seed in the ground myself. I want to put a no limit seed. A no limit seed. I believe in giving. 
I'm a huge believer in giving because I know my life has shifted every time. I want to have seed in the ground, and so I'm going to ask you to join with me and put a seed in the ground and label that thing, no limits. I want the limits off my mind. I want the limits off my heart, the limits off my spirit. And I'll be praying for the very three things that our dear friend was sharing today. I want to have right thinking all the time. I want to have the right environment around me. And I want to be surrounded with the right relationships. There's multiple ways to give. You make it very easy. You can give on Cash App, which is dollar sign accelerate now. You can give with Givelify, which is our giving application. You can download that in either Google Store or the Apple Store. And you can also give with Text to Give, which is also available for you. You can give on our website. And lastly, if you want to give with the physical, with physical currency, physical cash, we do have envelopes so under your seats to which you can fill those out as well. So I take these few moments again to put a seed in the ground. And I want everybody to either write it or type it with your giving and say no limits. I'm going to prepare my seed as well. Amen. As you're preparing your seed, I just sowed my seed. It's so convenient to do it right on your phone. You can text to give. You can do cash app. However you feel led to give, go ahead and give that seed. And I encourage you as we begin to kick off our fast, our 10 days of fasting. Remember, we're getting in position for 2022. We're not waiting. We're not waiting until next year, but we are fasting now for seven days and then three more days. Sow a seed, amen, to get in position holistically for everything you're believing God for. Amen. I talked about our fasting on our midweek services. We talked about it here, so everyone should be aware. If you need the guide, if you have not received the guide, when you walk out the doors, please stop by the Welcome Center and pick up the fasting guide. Additionally, there's a church calendar for the rest of the events for the rest of the year. So make sure you stop by the Welcome Center. Amen. Our singers are going to come. Amen. And they're going to get ready to sing after we watch these announcements. And again, you're going to hear a lot of dates on the announcements. Stop by the Welcome Center. Pick up the calendar. Pick up your fasting guide. We're fasting on one accord. And every time we come together and we fast and we pray together, we see God do breakthroughs. Because some things come by prayer. Others come by fasting. And I'm looking for 2022 to be a rocket year for us. Amen. Amen. So join in and make the sacrifice necessary. Pick up your fasting God and join in with us. Amen. Praise team, come. Please pay attention to our video screen. We have some announcements. And then Pastor Dio and I will be in the foyer to greet you. What's up, Accelerators? This is your boy Jarvis, and I am here to bring you the Acceleration Announcements in less than 60 seconds with our Acceleration Minute. Listen, we had an awesome time last night to kick off our holiday season, our couples ministry. We danced the night away. My wife and I had our swag on. All of the couples came out in their best dress. We had live music. We had a DJ. We had food. I'm telling you, we had an awesome time at our winter party. Also, December 17th, our little accelerators will be right here at Acceleration Church at 7 p.m. We have our trained facilitators here to offer a safe environment. They're gonna have food, they're gonna have sweets, they're gonna have their pajama party. Make sure that our little ones are here at 7 p.m. Also, December 19th, we will be having our Acceleration production with our young people called The Gift, December 19th at 10 a.m. Make sure that you're here. Our production team has been in rehearsals, we've been in meetings, and I am super excited of what our young people have planned for you. Listen, there is so much to do right here at Acceleration Church. We partner with our Angel Tree. We ask that you sign up at the Welcome Center. You have until December 13th to sign up, so you don't want to miss this opportunity. Listen, as we enhance our worship experience, we have our dance ministry. If you're interested and you have the gift of dance and you're between the ages of five and up, you're right here each and every Thursday at 7 p.m. Youth and young adults, join our worship ministry right here also every Thursday at 7 p.m. Listen, that's all I have for you right now. I hope that you have an awesome week, and I will see you next Sunday. 
for everything that's going forth in the ministry for the remainder part of the year. I, I plead along with Jarvis that you become a part of it. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. All right. Y'all know this one. You ready? Come on. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. Multiply that seed for your purpose and for your glory in the name of Jesus. Listen up real quick. If you are a youth, we want to see you right here this Thursday as we do our semi-dress rehearsal at 7 p.m. We want to see you here. We want to fit you for your costume. Parents, 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 bring your children. And then on Saturday morning at 10 a.m., that is our final dress rehearsal. Have your kids here so that we can get you ready for Sunday morning, December 19th, 10 a.m. at Acceleration Church, where your children will be featured in the production. Amen? Yeah. All right, and now as we leave this place, not from your presence, we ask that you decree the declaration with me, one voice, one sound, one, two, three, read. I am an accelerator. Everything I touch increases. My blessings are moving at an accelerated speed, and God is accelerating favor all around me. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>